In Climate Watch, forest fires tearing through Siberia have experts worried about the potential long-term impacts on the planet. The fires have spanned millions of acres and are creating a potential threat to the climate everywhere. Environmentalists say these fires could increase the melting of the Arctic. Yesterday, President Trump offered Russian President Vladimir Putin assistance in fighting the fires. For more on this, we're joined by CBS News contributing meteorologist Jeff Berardelli. Jeff, so what is the status of these fires right now and how unusual is it for this to be happening in Siberia of all places. <laughs> right, so uh, fires in Siberia are, are fairly normal, but this is an unprecedented fire in terms of its size. So it's around uh, 8 million acres or so. To put that into uh, perspective for you, that's the size of the country of Belgium. Oh my gosh. Okay. And also, it's about 20 times bigger than the Mendocino complex fire in California last year, which was the largest fire in California history, 20 times larger. Um, they, they weren't going to fight this in a traditional sense uh, until it really got out of control in Siberia. And a lot of this smoke is impacting some fairly big cities. The third biggest city in, in uh, Siberia, or excuse me, in Russia, is being affected by smoke mm -hmm. right now. And people were kind of up in arms that they weren't fighting these fires. You know, these fires are in very remote areas oftentimes. And so if they're not threatening villages, it's almost more expensive to fight them than otherwise. Wow. However, the smoke is becoming such an encumbrance that it, and, and a health issue and, and uh and dangerous so that people wanted it fought. The financial cost is one thing. I understand the efficiency it might be better to just let it burn out uh -huh. than to send the, the resources there, but the environmental cost must be enormous. What is that cost and, and what is it doing to the Arctic? So first of all, it's pumping out a tremendous amount of CO2, right. uh, more than, than a city produces. Uh, that's how much that's how much CO2 it's pumping out. Also, it's burning all that forest. So, you know, obviously the forest absorbs CO2. Well, mm -hmm. if you take away the forest, it can't absorb CO2. So this is kind of a feedback loop. And releasing this carbon dioxide into the atmosphere through the burning mm -hmm. of these trees is actually warming the planet even more. So it's this huge feedback loop. There's one more thing. That ash that's released into the atmosphere. You ever look at a picture of a glacier and you, you see it's not perfectly white. It's right. got kind of a black coat. Right. So that's black carbon. So a lot of times when you have these big fires burning, that settles on top of the glaciers, makes them darker. And by making them darker, they absorb more sunlight, absorb more heat, and that kind of speeds the process along. So we're involved in this big feedback loop across all the Arctic. You melt more ice, then more of the sunlight penetrates into land and it penetrates into the ocean, which are darker surfaces. That warms it up more and melts more ice and causes more fires. And so we're involved in a feedback loop, which some say is one of the tipping points in our climate. So as these phenomena happen, as forest fires continue and basically accelerate global warming, do you think that global warming is simply going to accelerate exponentially from here on out? Um, it's hard to say if we've passed that tipping point. That's, that's, that's the question. I yeah. think it's really hard to answer that. Um, but the further and further we get along, the more and more that it's impossible to reverse it. I mean, we have a certain amount of heating that is baked in. We think at least another half a degree Celsius, so one degree Fahrenheit, is baked in. Now remember, when you say baked in, what do you mean? Baked in meaning that the atmosphere has enough carbon dioxide in it already, and there's a little bit of a lag time mm -hmm. such that it still needs to catch up. So even if we completely stopped emissions today, we'd still see at least another half degree uh, Celsius, one degree Fahrenheit of warming to go. And we don't know how far we've pushed the planet past its tipping points or to its tipping points such that it may kind of go on its own, spiral on its own. This is just... Oh, it's terrifying. Depressing. I know. It's, it's, um, it's, I understand. But it's important that we're talking about it. The mm -hmm. more we talk about it, the more people yeah. at home talk about it. Um, speaking of the Arctic, uh, they have been seeing record temperatures. Why is that? Right. So a couple of things are happening. First of all, Alaska had its warmest July on record. Not just its warmest July on record, but its warmest month ever in, in, in recorded history. But not by a couple of degrees, or excuse me, I should not by a little bit, by three degrees, by three full wow. degrees over the next warmest month they've ever seen. And June, by the way, was the warmest June ever. So that's just in Alaska. And they've seen 90 plus days of above normal temperatures for the whole state. Many of those days being 10 degrees above normal for the whole state, not just one 10 city. degrees. Yeah. Greenland, that big heat wave that was in uh, Europe actually got stronger in terms of its atmospheric profile mm -hmm. and built itself over Greenland and caused tremendous melting the past couple of days. That's starting to let up, but this was a record-breaking heat ridge across Greenland. And we're seeing this kind of thing happen all over the Arctic. Water temperatures on the edges of the ice sheet right now, which by the way, is in record low territory. The ice sheet is in record low territory right now. But the water temperatures around it are about two to four degrees Celsius or about four to seven degrees Fahrenheit above what it should be. And there are tremendous algae blooms uh, near Denmark right now. So there are all kinds of things that are being thrown off kilter and all kinds of feedbacks that are developing because of this. 
And there are huge algae blooms also off the coast of Mexico. I saw near yeah. Cancun. Right. Um, you, well, something you said made me think of when I was covering the heat wave a few weeks ago in the Midwest, these heat waves seem to become more um, seem to be happening more frequently, mm -hmm. lasting longer. Is this right. all connected to the same global yeah, warming effect? Absolutely. Um, heat waves are becoming more common. In fact, if there is a direct link between climate change and any weather phenomena, it's probably most direct when it comes to heat waves because, first of all, we've warmed the planet, mm -hmm. so every heat wave is going to be warmer than the one before. But it's more than that, uh, especially parts of the, the country, parts of the world that are dry, like the Middle mm -hmm. East, uh, the Mediterranean. They're going to see. Uh, tremendous heat waves in the future. They're already seeing heat waves like this. We've seen two of them in Europe this year. Uh, the one in, in the United States was was kind of a modest heat wave when you compare it to what happened in Europe. Uh, several countries broke their all-time country records that they've never seen. And Paris broke its record by three or four degrees Fahrenheit, its all-time highest temperature. And France broke it, it, its uh, all-time highest temperature by three to four degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, so incredible warming. These heat waves are directly linked to climate change, and they will continue to get worse. And extreme weather overall is increasing. Yeah. I covered the polar vortex last year, the mm -hmm. Arctic freeze, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Um, you know, just worse all around. Very important that you're here, Jeff. Thank you so much. You're welcome.